Hey, this is Patrick with TakeTheTruck.com. I uh, just wanted to do a quick uh, video. I've had a lot of people asking about our uh, power system. Uh, we've had a, a, quite a few articles up on the blog uh, discussing different options for uh, power while camping and what we ultimately landed on. But uh, today I just kind of wanted to walk through specifically what we use. Um, some of it doesn't exactly apply because you can't buy the solar generator that we ended up using. Uh, right now but there are other models available and the same manufacturer is coming out with a new one here shortly um, but I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of walk you through how we uh, set up our system uh, kind of talk through a couple of the different options and uh, obviously there will be more information uh, on our blog at takethetruck.com but um, I'll kind of walk you through what we've got and what works for us and our needs so hopefully it'll help you guys and uh, yeah all right so uh, you'll have to forgive the wiring nightmare that is uh, going on right now I'm in the process of uh, installing a bus and uh, fixing this absolute cluster but um, anyways uh, ignore that because uh, that's obviously terrible but uh, the w one thing I wanted to discuss is, so uh, we we went with a uh, kind of a hybrid system, so a traditional dual battery system. Uh, you've got two batteries, either either both in the engine compartment uh, or one in the engine compartment, one uh, kind of back, you know, in the camper. Uh, RVers uh, call it the house battery. Um, so uh, your charging system works by... Uh, the alternator uh, generating the power to charge your starting battery and uh, supply auxiliary power for your lights and 12 volt outlets in your car. Um, in a dual battery system, uh, the alternator uh, charges your starting battery and an additional battery. Um, you can do that. A, couple different ways you can you can just simply wire two batteries in parallel double your starting battery capacity and uh, and run a dual battery system that way uh, the disadvantage is you can still kill both batteries um, if you use up enough power um, another more common situation is you use a battery isolator so your your alternator uh, uses the isolator to prioritize uh, charging your starting battery and then it uh, diverts charging to the house battery once this is is uh, full to capacity so uh, in that situation you would wire all of your electrical off your secondary battery and then if you kill that battery it doesn't matter because your starting battery is isolated from the system uh, hence the battery isolator so uh, that's that's a, a system that we've run uh, for numerous years in other vehicles uh, with with no disadvantage other than the complexity uh, you have to run proper gauged wire between all of the different components um, and these uh, AGM and lead acid batteries that we've used in the past are very heavy uh, and large so they take up a bunch of room um, so we weren't too keen on that uh, having something in the in the back in the camper that would take up that much room or be I mean some of these batteries are 70 pounds um, depending on what what kind it is and how large so we wanted to avoid that uh, what we found was the energy Kodiak solar generator which we've been running for the last several years uh, since it came out uh, energy's gone through a couple different uh, varieties um, I'll kind of show you that so it's a uh, it's a pretty compact little unit. We've been super super happy with it. Uh, they're based out of Idaho, um, and it just provides a lot of options that uh, some of the more commonly used ones don't don't include. I mean, it even has a 30 amp output, like an RV hookup, um, and then it's got six 110 volt um, two. I think these are 10 amp, either 10 or 15 amp output, uh, 12 volt outlets. Uh, these are like auxiliary uh, outlets that we've never used, USB. Um, 
and then it's got a fast charger uh, using a I think it's called a new trick I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right charging port and then it's got a, uh, a slower charge port right there another unique feature of the Kodiak was that it had these uh, terminals on the side and you could actually daisy chain lead acid or AGM batteries off of it uh, as long as they're approximately the same amp hour um, so you could actually expand this thing indefinitely <laughs> using uh, standard you know, standard AGM batteries but uh, what we liked about it is super compact it's only 20 pounds uh, it's like seven ish inches tall and if I, I don't remember the the width dimensions but it's, it's really small um, and it fit perfectly into our uh, sleeping platform design and so that's where we have everything wired and so our system uses a hybrid so uh, we we charge the energy primarily off of the trucks 12 volt um, not directly wired to the alternator because that would not be good but we've we've essentially we've just extended a 12 volt outlet uh, to the energy's car charger um, and then we hooked the car charger in and uh, uh, another benefit to this was at the time we bought it it was the fastest charge uh, rate possible on on DC it was uh, it's capable of charging off the truck at like 240 watts which was at least twice what uh, goal zero was able to do at the time uh, goal zeros off and on offered a, uh, a super fast charger uh, I forget what they call it. I think it's called the, the Yeti Link. Uh, it was $400 more in addition to the actual uh, Yeti solar generator. So uh, it was cost prohibitive. We felt like at the time, and they've since discontinued the Yeti Link, at least temporarily. I think they're going to come out with a redesigned one. Um, so that may all look different now. But uh, this general layout uh, would work with Goal Zero products or, or really any other uh, solar generator product um, as long as it has a car charger. Uh, so the, the, the caveat is, is how fast can it charge off the, off the car charger. A lot of them, like the, the Jackery products, have a pretty slow 12-volt uh, charge rate uh, on their car chargers. So uh, that's why we landed on this one, but you could use goal zero and and those similarly because i know they've got uh car chargers i think the goal zeros is like 120 watts or something like that which isn't bad um so all we did was let me walk around here and you'll have to forgive me that I, my gimbal is dead so this is going to be a bit janky but uh so we ran a uh this is a relay a standard uh four prong relay and uh it's, it's got a proper amperage rating. Uh, it's wired to ignition electric, so when we turn the truck on, then it opens up the flow of electricity uh, to our 12-volt outlet that we have um, in the bed of the truck. And that flows 12 volts off of the, the starting battery. Um, let me just get this... So, and then this is the energies. Where am I at here? This is the energies uh, car charging port. So, car charger right there. That's uh, 240 watts uh, charge rate. Um, and then I did uh, because un unfortunately the Kodiak didn't have a means of charging, of monitoring the input the wattage, I installed a, a watt meter in line um, just so I could see how much the charge, uh, the truck was was charging, how much the, ener the energy was drawing, and make sure that it wasn't over drawing amperage. And uh, of course we have fuses in line to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, between the car charger 12 volt outlet and the, the starting battery. Um, and then this is our slow chart, the, the slow charger port, um, just out to some MC4 connectors that go to a, a, an outlet up here so that I can hook up our solar panels and charge it when the truck is off. Um, let's see here. And then as far as running electrical, uh, we use the two 
12 volt DC outlets on the energy. One of them is solely dedicated to running our uh, camping fridge, our ARB Elements camping fridge. Um, and that's, that's wired out to uh, outlets here. So that's DC 12 volt coming out of the energy uh, here. And then we have a secondary one that runs electrical to the camper. Um, for things like charging cell phones. Um, let me see here. So I've got this one marked white for, uh, so I know which one goes to the fridge. And then the house one, and then I've got a little marine uh, fuse bus there. So everything's fused. We used to have power coming off of that going to our vent fan. Um, and then we have it run back into these pockets and then um, I'm actually adding another one up into the GoFast camper so that we can charge our cell phones and laptops and stuff down here while we're on the road. Um, it's a pretty, pretty basic system. It's, it, that's, that's one of the reasons we landed on this, this option um, because using a solar generator, uh, you don't have as much of a, a wiring mess uh, as a traditional dual battery system. Um, there's there's uh, more versatility because you can take the solar generator out, um, which we do at least a couple times a year. We'll bring it into the house to run our uh, fridge or something when the power goes out. So that's a, a super bonus. Um, cost is is really the only major factor. Um, most solar generators are, are about uh, a dollar per watt. Uh, Per, per watt hour. Um, this is a 1100 watt hour uh, lithium solar generator. Uh, so um, goal zero, uh, we we have links to s several of theirs that, that have, uh, you know, between 200 and 500 and 1,000, 1,400. Uh, once you get above the 1,400, it's really like it's such a big device and it's so cost prohibitive. I wouldn't recommend it for camping purposes myself, but um, anyways, that's how we do it. So power the truck, truck powers the starting battery. Uh, we've run a 12 volt outlet off of the starting battery back here using 10 gauge wire. Um, and then we charge the solar generator off of the starting battery. And then we run all of our camping equipment off the solar generator um, so that's that's what we landed on it's it's really simple um, it may sound more complex as I'm saying it but uh, definite definite advantages to to that setup um, we've we've like I've said we used it all uh, in, in different vehicles over the years and we're super happy with this method um, and you can see I mean that's one AGM battery, and it's this. It's small, smaller height-wise at least, and it's like half the weight of one AGM battery. Um, and most of the Goal Zero products are, are approximate. Um, we just like the dims and, and features on this one. So uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, and one thing I always like to po point out is you don't, you don't, you may not even need. A solar generator or a dual battery system you need to assess what your power usage is uh, and we've got tools for that on the blog um, linked into our dual battery setup post um, kind of walking you through how to look at your devices how to assess your needs um, and we also discuss some some kind of just basic uh, terminology as far as electrical goes um, we are by no means 12 volt experts. Obviously, <laughs> you can see what a nightmare I've got going on right here that I need to fix. But, um, but it, it it will help kind of get your head wrapped around it and uh, and walk you through what you might need um, if you're just charging cell phones and laptops um, and you know the occasional heavy draw item. You probably only need your starting battery. And then a uh, a backup like uh, 
jump starter, like a lithium jump starter. In case you do kill your battery, then you can get your vehicle started. I always recommend carrying those, um, even if you've got a dual battery system or whatever situation. So, uh, yeah, then you can just plug in your vehicle 12 volt outlet, charge your devices. Um, you know, they make in, they make uh, 110 volt uh, inverters that you can, you can run 110 volt equipment off of that 12 volt outlet. Um, they're obviously limited in their output ability. It's not like you're gonna be able to run a microwave off of it. Um, but anyways, uh, so assess your needs prior to spending a bunch of money on all this electrical equipment because you may not need it. If you want to run a fridge and a vent fan or uh, you know blenders or you work full time on the road and need to charge your laptop all the time, you, you, you might you might need a dual battery system. Um, well, you probably would. Uh, if you need a fridge, you need a dual battery system, in my opinion. But anyways, that's the gist of it. Uh, hopefully, this didn't get too long winded. And uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. Um, and check out the blog posts uh, for a lot more detail on all of this. Thanks for watching. Bye.